Welcome to Retro Bassing. Building the tack wall behind me over the past couple of weeks, if not months, has definitely been a blast. It's kind of opened my eyes up to two different things. One, the incredible amount of old school, new in the package tackle that I've got. And also the incredible amount of old school, new in the package tackle that cannot fit on this giant eight by 16 foot wall. So today on Retro Bassin, we're gonna to try to thin out the herd a little bit. And I've got some different new in the package lures set aside that I actually have recently listed on eBay. Uh, each of these lots that I'm gonna be showing today, I've listed for $1 plus shipping. And I'm also gonna be including uh, one of these, a Retro Bassin decal. So I'm gonna run through these 11 lots, show you some of the old school gold that unfortunately I just don't have room for on the tackle wall. By the way guys, let me know if you like this kind of content. I have not done too much selling of lures on the eBay, trying to figure out the best medium to do it, whether or not it is a whatnot eBay or that secret site that I have in the video description that I have not launched yet officially. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the first lot of retro bass and lures, and this is a lot of 10 new in the package crankbaits. I'm just gonna go ahead and pull up some of the different baits that are in this lot. First thing, I've got a couple of pose lures. This is a vintage RC1 Rick Clun model. And also this one, a vintage pose series 200. I absolutely love this style of package. These are the, I think, 1987 and 1990 Pose pre-Yakima bait era. And man, I cannot tell you how cool it was back in the day to go into a local tackle shop and see a bunch of these hanging on the peg. In addition to that, in the lot, I've got a couple of Smithwick Rogues that I've picked up. One is a Rattlin Rogue and a pretty glorious, I'll get this in focus here, in a pretty glorious bass pattern. And another one, a suspending pro rogue in sort of a fluorescent perch pattern. So a couple Smithwick baits new in the package as well. I've also got a uh, bait signature model, pro model from a very young looking KVD, Strike King shallow running crankbait. Sort of almost looks like it would be not necessarily a man's one minus, looks like it might run a little bit deeper than that, maybe one to three feet. I also have these two baits, new in the package, Bomber Rat Lures, in a couple of different colors. You could either hang these on your own tackle wall or definitely give them a cast. One looks like a Tennessee Shad and the other in a sort of Smoky Joe pattern. I've also got a LNS mirror lure in that first lot right here. And I think this is the classic M52 model. Nice saltwater bait for trout and redfish. I've also got a old school, looks like a flatfish in a crackle frog pattern. And lastly, a Storm Texas Shad. This is a lesser known bait from Storm. This is a pretty cool one. It is their version of a sort of lipless crankbait. Get that in focus. And this is in a chartreuse pattern. Pretty cool. So that's it for lot number one. The rest of the lots are not this big, by the way, just that was the, the big one that I wanted to lead off with. All right, on to lot number two. I've actually got three identical baits, which for me, I always like having three baits because that means that I could fish with one and display two. But here are the baits. This is a nice shad rack from Whopper Stopper, uh, three in three identical colors. And yeah, this one definitely would be a catcher. I'm not sure the weight of this crankbait. It looks to me sort of like a Mm, quarter ounce, maybe three eighths ounce. I'm not sure it, the packaging has kind of faded over the years, uh, but three Whopper stoppers in a nice yellow perch pattern. Let's see if it has a year on here. Uh, what well, does say copyright 1987. So that's it for, for lot number two. And again, I'll have a retro bass and sticker in with this one 
and I'll start the listing off on all these at $1. I have been on a little bit of a jig kick as of late. Actually picked up recently some Cumberland Pro Lures uh, of the Randy Blockett variety. And here are three jigs that you may have never heard of. This is from Arbogast. This is called the Dry Rind line. They had this line in the late 1980s, perhaps early 90s. And basically what it is, it is sort of a, uh, a rawhide-like material, biodegradable but it's meant to be reused over time. And this one in three different colors here, there is a blue, a brown, and a yellow. Let's see if it says anything about the weight, three eighths ounce on these. These are pretty cool baits from Arbogast. I, one that you don't see too, too often. And here's one actually out of the package that I'm planning to fish with. So you can sort of see what it looks like. So that is a sweet little jig there. It's got a nice head, fiber weed guard, but the cool thing about this bait is look at those little appendages. Now, when this thing gets wet, these things definitely come alive and it is actually a pretty robust bait. The paint has chipped off these for me in the past, but as far as how well this holds up, the actual body of the lure holds up pretty well. And there'll be three of those in that retro bass and lot. All right, next one is one that I am a little bit upset to part with, but I just didn't have a good place for this one. And this is a special carded edition of the Neon Spot in the 1 8 ounce, not quarter ounce, uh, variety. This is a pretty cool one. This package has certainly seen better days. I think there's some staples in here kind of holding the plastic intact. But it still would look pretty cool hanging somewhere in your display. It would look cooler if I could get it in focus. There we go. <laughs> it's got four different models here or the four different colors. Looks like a black, a blue, and a chartreuse shad, as well as this one in the little crawfish pattern. This bait has got a 1991 label on it. It does say Fort Smith, Arkansas, so it is a Pradco version of the Cordell bait. I'm gonna go ahead and list this guy at $1 as well, and also have a retro bass and a sticker in there. One of my all-time confidence baits is a spoon. I don't care if I'm fishing for largemouth bass, albeit tough to throw a treble hook spoon for largemouth bass in Florida, or chain pickerel, or trout, or anything else, but I love a little spoon, especially a little quarter ounce spoon like this. This is a pretty cool dealer card I picked up a, a number of years ago. It is the Warden's Wobble Lure, and it has got one, two, three, four, five, so 10 of these baits on here, identical. Looks like two were sold, but the rest of them are intact and ready to be fished with or displayed. It says Yakima Bait Company, Granger, Washington, made in the USA. And this is the number 940 nickel with the flame stripe. Does not have a year on it, but that is definitely an old one. And I've gone ahead, by the way, and reinforced this little peg here, kind of broken over the years. If you did want to display that, you certainly could, and that will hold up. Well, I've definitely been thinking about Mr. Rick Clun lately, uh, given his, uh, I wouldn't say sudden retirement, but given his retirement from professional bass fishing. And here are three vintage Rick Clun baits. These are from Bill Norman, Norman Lures, and this one is called the Rippin' Rick. What this bait does is it suspends not because of any internal weights that come with, but rather it's got a little plug on the bottom of the bait. And what you do is you pull that plug, submerse it in water, and add enough water for whatever kind of conditions you're looking for to get it to suspend appropriately. I do have a couple of these that I'm gonna keep in my collection because I have not done an episode on this bait, and I definitely need baits to do that with. But I've got three spares here. Um, I did actually add a little hanging tag as well, so oh, <laughs> if you wanted to hang them up, you could, or you can fish with these guys. Three different colors of the Norman Rip and Rick with the nice Gamagatsu hooks. So this next lot, lot number seven, is an interesting one. This is a vintage bait. I don't even know where I picked this thing up. I've actually got a couple of different packs of these, but I rarely, if ever, see these online. This is called the Burlore Bait Company from Dover, New Jersey, Golden Shiner. This is a four pack dealer pack here. And 
This thing, I don't think it's sealed, so I'll open it up and show you kind of what's inside. This is a really cool looking bait. Each one of these little guys, check that out. It is a little micro swim bait. It's almost got sort of a chatterbait style head to it, which is pretty cool, jointed with a single hook. I have no doubt this thing would be mean in a stream, but certainly uh, also pretty cool for your collection because again, uh, a bait that I just don't see too, too often. And you're gonna have four of them, so maybe you, you fish with one and you, you save the others. A few years back, I picked up a, a bunch of carded lures, some of which I've got on display behind me, some of which I just don't have room for. This is one that I'm a, a little bit upset to part with, but again, <laughs> I've got to thin the herd a little bit here. This is from Will Co. and it is a half ounce lively lure wheel hoss. This almost looks like an old school striper swiper. It's sort of that a big version of a Blakemore Roadrunner, but again, in a half ounce, and there are one, two, three, four, five, six. So 12 of these on this card display. The hole is in good tact, and it looks like there are not any missing lures on here. So I don't know if anybody is gonna buy this to really fish with these things, unless there is, <laughs> again, some market for half ounce Roadrunners I don't know about but that is a pretty cool piece either way and definitely one that if I had a little bit more room, a few more inches, I would put this on the retro bass and tackle wall. Sticking with the theme of carded lures, uh, here is a, another one. This is actually comes with a nice little box here as well. And this is from Fisherman's Tackle. It is called the Slasher. Let's go fishing. It is a quarter ounce bait, and there are also 12 of these. This bait looks similar to, I would say like a man's little George. It looks like a nice little schooling bait. It's got a lead head here, a single treble hook, and a little spinner. A little bit more finessey perhaps than some of the little Georges that I've seen uh, between the, the black, the little blade, and that light weight. But just the same, a pretty cool display piece. It's gonna come in this box but that hole is in pretty good shape if you did want to hang this on your wall. And this one also is gonna be listed at a dollar with a retro bass and sticker. And there's the uh, outside of the box on that guy. All right, second to last lot here. This one is a little bit of a grab bag. I kind of put in a number of lures that all were kind of panfish centric, but all of these are on that sort of dealer card. So I'll go through these real quick here. First one is a four pack of these spoons. And what does it say? Bud's Baby Croc. It looks like a little, oh, that might be like an eighth ounce spoon. That's a pretty cool bait. I have no doubt that would be a good stream lure. There we go. Uh, I've got three packs of this. Uh, Dura Pack Shad Dart. It looks like this is a 16th of an ounce. This is a bait, I used to love to throw these with a live minnow for chain pickerel. It was one of the best best sort of lure bait combinations out there. And there are three packs of those. Here are some pretty cool ones. A couple of panfish baits. One, I just like the logo on that. <laughs> it says Bayou Lures. <laughs> That's pretty cool. And this one has a number of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Now like 15 or so of these. And also this one as well which is a Grand Mare Beetles. Looks like eighth ounce Beetles as well. So a couple of pretty cool carded crappie baits if you wanted to fish with those. And last, a Green Mountain Tackle pack of hooks. So that is all gonna be in this lure lot. Uh, just again, kind of a grab bag of things that are gonna be geared more toward the smaller variety of panfish. Uh, but certainly some uh, display worthy pieces if you guys wanted to hang them on your tackle wall. Last but not least is, man, one that I struggled with uh, relinquishing to be honest. But again, I kind of wanted to sweeten the deal on this video and put up something I thought was pretty cool. I am a huge fan of Dr. Lauren Hill and his color selector. This thing was all the rage in the 1980s and early 90s. And basically it's derived from this product which is supposed to test the water, 
in clear stained or muddy water and let you know what the best color of lure is to use. What's interesting is the color selector pretty much points to one of these six outlandish, very non-natural colors. Pretty much a fluorescent version of either red, orange, chartreuse, green, blue, or purple. Just about everybody hopped on the color selector bandwagon back in the day, and Cotton Cordell was no exception, here with a pack of Rattlin spots. So this is a complete carded uh, edition of it. You can see there's Dr. Lauren Hill on the back with his color selector. Uh, this package has certainly seen better days. You can see the uh, lures are shifting out of there just a little bit. Um, but this is a package of lures that you just really don't see anymore, especially as a complete set and especially on the card. So I'm going to go ahead and list this thing for a dollar and we shall see what happens. What I'm gonna do for all the listings, by the way, is I'm gonna list links to them down below in the video description. But if you head on over to eBay and you type in Retro Bassin, it should come up as well for all of these different lure lots. And if you're looking for some more old school content, you can click right here. Otherwise, I'll see you right back here, same time, same place. And until then, keep the carpet side up, happy bidding, and fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bass.